and we are recording. Okay. It is 5.32, and I call to order our meeting. Welcome, everyone. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Uh, I know it was really nice to have, so I hope you all had the chance to at least go outside for a bit. Um, allergies for killing me a bit, but they really do be like that. Let's do a quick roll call with names, pronouns, if you're comfortable, position, as well as our check-in question for today. I was thinking um, our check-in question being, if you had an unlimited amount of anything, what would it be? So I'll go first. My name is Kai. I use he, him series. I'm speaker of the Senate. And if I had an unlimited of something, it would be an unlimited amount of uh, Sour Patch Kids. You can never go wrong with that. Um, I'm going to pass it to the person below me, Rashad. Thanks, Kai. Hi, everyone. I am Rashad Devon, third year biology student at UMBC, serving as executive president of SGA and use a he series. Um, I would say if I were to have an unlimited amount of something, I would have an unlimited amount of years to live. Practically be immortal. That's a good answer, right? Um, but yeah, um, I will pass it to Monty. <clears throat> Uh, hey guys, um, Mati here. Um, she or her pronoun SJ Senator. Um, if there's one thing I want to limit the amount of, it would be um, this travel bonuses, like not having to pay much for travel. That would just be like a jackpot for me. And I'll pass it to Mena. Hi, my name is Mena. I'm an SJ Senator. Um, my pronouns are she, hers. And if I was to have an unlimited amount of anything, I'm surprised no one has said this yet, but <laughs> money. Um, I think my reasons uh, say it. <laughs> Prove themselves. And I'm going to call on Wendy. Um, I would say like unlimited time just to like do everything that I want to do. And I'm going to call on Joshua. Hi everyone, um, Joshua Gray, he, him, his, Vice President for Student Organization. Um, to answer the prompt, I think I shared at a different meeting, I know Julius was there, but I'm obsessed with like oranges and generally vitamin C. So I would say an unlimited supply of oranges or an unlimited supply of the emergency packets. I will pass on over to Patrick. Hey, my name is Patrick Reed pronouns are he and his. Um, well, I'm a senator. If I had um, just anything, if I could have anything unlimited, um, that's really hard. I think I would just have unlimited um, like unlimited gas cards just for gas. Just, just realistically, yeah. Sorry, I always forget this part. Um, I will call on Victoria. Um, hi, my name is Victoria. I am SGA secretary, she, hers pronouns. And if I had an unlimited amount of anything, I would choose to have internet forever and ever really good internet. Um, and I will pass on to Julius. All right, hello, my name is Yuri Seo. My pronouns are he and his. Uh, if I had a unlimited anything, it would probably money because then I could probably just turn to like the biggest philanthropist of all time and just like just give out money to people and like help people with like investments and things of that nature. So that's probably what I would do. Um, Reese. Hello everyone, my name is Reese. I use he, him pronouns, I'm a senator. And I would choose something I don't have much of a unlimited patience, you know. Uh, B, have you gone yet? Hi, everyone. My name is Beatrice Gutierrez Malagon. I use she, her, her pronouns, coordinator for leadership and SGA Senate advisor. Um, if I had an unlimited amount of anything, uh, it would be energy. Um, I just, I would love to have an unlimited amount of energy just so I can do all the things I want to do at any given point of time. 
So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to who hasn't gone. Jessica. Hi, Jessica. She heard hers. Um, Senator. Yeah, and I would be like Mena and have some extra money, and also Julius, uh, just so I could do other said things like consume copious amounts of caffeine and travel to my heart's desire. Um, and who else hasn't gone yet? Patrick, have you gone yet? I have gone. Yes. Uh, there are, it looks like there. Never mind, Candace. You're fine, Jessica. You good? Um, Candace Martinez Doan. Hold on, I'm gonna go on camera for this. Where's Kim Harris? Assistant Director for Leadership and Governance. Um, she, her, hers. Uh, pronouns. Um, and I'm on the same wave as Reese. I need patience. I need more of it now. I will tell you that one of my favorite movie lines, don't think it's cheesy, okay, is from um, Bruce Almighty. And it's um, Morgan Freeman says, or somebody says, I can't remember who, I think it was Morgan. He said, do you think that when you ask God for patience, he gives you more patience or does he give you more opportunities to be patient? And I was like, God bless America. This movie got me and it's not even supposed to get me. So that's patience. Uh, <laughs> uh, Maria. Hi everybody, my name is Maria. My pronouns are she or hers and I'm an SGA Senator. And also like Jessica, Julius and Mena, if I would have an unlimited amount of anything, it would be money. Um, and I think the last person left is Z. I'm Z, they, them, I'm a senator, and I would choose unlimited time. Okay. I got a little worried because the mute button wasn't working, but wow i'm really impressed y'all have like thought-provoking answers that make a lot more sense and here i am that just said sour patch kids so ooh. but um cool now i know what to get you if i ever become a genie cool next we'll move on to our land acknowledgement statement stating related to our value of inclusive excellence we would like to acknowledge that umbc is built on the native tribal lands of the indigenous biscato Conway tribes we acknowledge the painful history of forced removal from this territory, honor their history as cultivators of this land, and respect the many diverse indigenous people still connected to this land on which we gather, even if we're online. Um, thank you, Dr. Jasmine Lee, for sending that. that. Okay. Let us move on to the approval of the agenda. There are some things that I would like to amend, so I will go ahead and share my screen. Or not. <laughs> okay. Oh, my computer is black. Hoping that y'all can still hear me. I would like to amend the agenda uh, to add JL22-2021, the approval for FY22 SGA budget, as well as adding JR09-2021, an amendment to the MCJR. Is there a second? Oh, second. Okay. Um, is there a general consensus? Okay. I, I don't see any uh, nays in the chat or no. So uh, the approval, the uh, approval of the agenda as amended has passed. I believe I said that correctly. Okay. Uh, next, let's look at the approval of the minutes from last week. Uh, thank you again, Victoria, for going through. Um, I did make a couple 
uh, spelling checks, but all in all, that's all it was. Um, hope you all had the chance to review that as well. Is there a motion on the floor? Move to approve the minutes. Cool. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. All right. Uh, again, is there general consensus? CCC? Cool, cool, cool. All right. And with that, the minutes have been passed. Let's move on to our first line of new business the approval of F22 SGA budget. Um, Rashad, I will give you the floor in introducing this. Um, and I will go ahead and put the link to the spreadsheet in the chat. Awesome. Thank you, Kai. I'm going to share my screen if that's okay with you. And that's that's perfectly fine. Perfect. Can can everyone see this? <clears throat> awesome. So, hello, everyone. Thanks for having us here today. Um, this is our presentation explaining in detail what we were hoping to request for the FY22 fiscal year. Um, today, it's just me and Josh. The other two um, top four folks could not join us due to previous commitments. But this QR code, this QR code on the slide will refer you to the budget spreadsheet for this presentation. And, you know, Kai also included that in the chat and also in the agenda that we sent out. Um, I think it was yesterday, the amended agenda. But before we dive into it, we thought it would be good for everyone in the call to know about the assumptions we designed our budget under. So we assumed that SGA would be charging the full student activity fee for both spring and fall semesters. We assumed a virtual or low density return to student organization meetings and events for the fall and spring semesters. And we assumed that enrollment remains about the same or higher as when we got our projections in early March. And just for a reference for those that don't know, the student activity fee is currently $104 per undergraduate student. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, just to reintroduce my, myself, Joshua O'Gray, he and pronouns serve as the vice president for student organizations. Um, and so moving into the budget and more of its particulars now, our proposed budget was built around the values and priorities listed in SGA's constitution, bylaws, and the organization's newly designed strategic plan, which you all voted for in the past year. Um, our budgeting decisions also took into account the transition back to in-person instruction and following mandatory quarantines and the need for physical distancing to quell the threat of COVID-19. Um, and we recognize that instructional and cultural shifts created new needs for the student body. And we believe this budget addresses those concerns. Um, and, and to name some of those priorities specifically, first and foremost, we wanted to promote and incentivize student organization activity. Student organizations, in my opinion, act as a primary apparatus for UMPC's cultural development and their level of activity and engagement really directly impacts student retention, academic success, and our sense of belonging here. And so uh, with the guidance we have received for this coming fall, typical student organization activities such as mass in-person meetings and events seem to be still requested, re restricted, excuse me. However, the budget leaves significant room for student organizations to operate still and to have the resources to carry out those operations safely. Uh, this this is a highlight of the budget, and you will see that later on. Um, secondly, as you see on the screen this year, we learned that greater student representation is more important than ever before as decisions across campus are being made that have long lasting and substantial impacts on the student experience. And uh, many officers worked on many different initiatives with different campus partners to ensure that student voices were being heard and valued. Um, and during these challenging during these challenging times and so to best serve the student body many appointed officers put in a lot of extra hours and sometimes the same amount of hours as the elected officers if not more and so next year we want to incentivize students applying for appointed positions by providing adequate compensation for their work uh, thoroughly as we will discuss later we also reduce the average semesterly expenditure to to parallel with financial and social limitations caused by COVID-19 and one of our biggest goals this upcoming fiscal year is to extend as many opportunities to as many students as possible to be involved with our campus community and loop uh, their networks into our daily work. And as a result, we are proposing three new standing executive departments that we know will continue to serve the student body's needs um, throughout the years. And these departments, the Department of Communications, 
the Department of Diversity and Inclusion and the Department of Government Relations. Um, these departments will introduce new specific positions that promote UMBC standing values of shared governance, transparency, and inclusive excellence. Um, and with all that tone setting out of the way, I'm going to pass it back to Mershot. Thank you, Josh. So the budget has a few highlights that, um, highlights that we want to touch on before we dive deeper into them later in the presentation. There are some very exciting new things coming our way as we grow and learn how to better serve the student body. Again, we are proposing a budget that projects a reduction in spending in many areas compared to previous years. And we will talk on this a little bit later on. Um, we are right-sizing charter and student org spending based on their needs and projections of how next how the next fiscal year will look like. We have communicated with the campus partners and we evaluated some of our co-sponsorships. Some of those funds will be reallocated to new partnerships in support of our key events initiatives. This year, we are introducing a new system on incentivizing student organization activity and engagement. The proposed student organization atypical reward, also known as SOAR, Thanks to Joshua and the team for, for that <laughs> beautiful acronym. Um, it's going to be an ad hoc allocation aimed at equal promotion of all active student organizations. This is serving as a temporary line item that is going to leave some life into the many um, of the student organizations that lost their spark during the past year. We will dive deeper into this new exciting line item very soon. And last but not least, in line with UMBC and its SGA's values and priorities and stemming from the recommendations which arose from this year's Empowered University Retreat, we are hoping to introduce a new scholarship that will help recognize new undergraduate student leaders. Super exciting. The Make Your Mark Leadership Scholarship is aimed at shining a spotlight um, on student leaders that wouldn't have gone recognized unless they were affiliated with SGA, SCB, or the other usual heads in the game. Um, we are hoping that this new scholarship can also assist and incentivize student leader scholarship by providing them with a very small financial incentive to continue doing their education and represent the grit and excellence of UMBC student body in their daily life. Awesome. Um, and now getting into the budget overview just a bit. Um, as you can see from the numbers on the screen, our proposed budgeted expenses for fiscal year 2022 is actually around 55K lower than fiscal year 20. Um, last year's budget is an outlier within the recent fiscal history of SGA as we opted to charge only 50% of the student activity fee in order to stay in line with the student fee reduction. Our projected incoming revenue for fiscal year 22 is about $1,035,000, um, but based on the recent guidance from admissions and enrollment, uh, this number might actually be a little higher than we initially considered for this budget. And with a projected budget expense of $1,058,185, we are requesting to pull about $23,000 from our reserves, which we are very proud of as it is much lower um, than how much we were tapping into our reserves in the previous years. This presentation is really based on the original budget draft for fiscal 21, which was approved by SAFRB, and hence we will use it throughout this presentation to differentiate what we are requesting for this year. Awesome. Thank you, Joshua. So without further ado, let's jump right into the language. So the administrative expenses make up about 17.9% of our annual budget. The money goes towards paying the salary and benefits of staff involved with SGA's processes. Usually this number goes up per year due to the annual salary, COLA benefits, and other respective increases. Um, but this year, um, you know, we reached out to Ms. Theresa Dillon to figure out precisely how much these items were increasing by, but she did mention that she had not received that guidance yet. So we left it the same and our total estimate is based on this assumption. Um, this amount usually hovers, the increased amount usually hovers somewhere between $10,000 to $20,000. All right, and to, to now hop into SGA internal spending um, or operations, our internal operations budget mostly stayed the same with some small tweaks here and there. We reallocated money between light items, again, based on guidance on how next year will look. Um, a lot of these decisions were in line with our values and priorities, those aforementioned, uh, which, which again, you can find on our website as well. 
um, and all of you guys were involved in the crafting or the ratification of that language. Um, the initiative fund covers the expenses of all SGA officer initiatives. Uh, we are pro proposing a slight increase in this part, which we will explain in the next slide. Our Senate this year um, brought to fruition an initiative that pilots free menstrual products in residence halls, um, and we're looking to continue to invest in programs like this. Um, we have a new line item that explains the annual cost of operationalizing this initiative. Um, and last but not least, we are adding a new line item for the mentioned Make Your Mark scholarship, which we will dive back into later on in the presentation. So as you can see, all of the line items in the first chart stay the same as the projected budget for FY21. And this is the first chart that we're talking about. With the exception of a $500 increase in the marketing and merchandise line item, which ties directly into our net. So we increased the initiative fund back to 11, up back to um, $11,572, which was the same as the amount that was proposed for fiscal year 2020. With a projected number of growing appointed officers, there will be a larger number of initiatives that will require some funding in order for them to benefit the student body. This year, we struggled a little bit with the $6,000 that was originally um, allocated to this fund. Um, we believe that if we had a larger amount dedicated to this line item, we would have seen more beneficial initiatives coming out of SGA. This increase is also in line with our priority for next year, which is supporting students by providing them with the necessary resources. Naturally, if we have more money, we have more flexibility regarding the programs we are able to plan. And this is where the $500 increase in marketing and merchandise comes in. With more projected community events and initiatives, the more money is needed to advertise those events. So we decrease the member development and election night extravaganza costs. We know that we are still going to need some money to provide treasurer support training for the student body and the student wor workshop as such. Um, the same is true with e, &E. Um, We know that the series will continue into this year, but again, based on the guidance we have received regarding limited activity in the fall, we're expect expecting the need for them to be less than the previous years. We are requesting 1,380 for the mentioned free menstrual product initiatives. We're honestly, you know, I'm so proud of you all, um, everyone in Senate, and especially Kai, um, you know, about this, especially with the passage of HB 0205 in Maryland, which if you guys did not know, requires all Maryland K-12 public educational in institutions to pro provide menstruating students with free products. Um, UMBC is going to be at the forefront of bright-minded education institutions that will be taking a similar approach for their students. Um, the pilot program for this initiative is starting this spring, and we are hoping to expand it beyond residence halls in the future. This initiative is an agreement that ha we have set with ResLife and RSA, and RSA is also financially contributing to this initiative. Um, the last noteworthy change in our operation operating budget is the addition of the line item for the Maker Mark Leadership Scholarship. Um, this idea came from the Empowered University retreat and a conversation regarding lack of opportunities for student leaders to shine. Any undergraduate can be a student leader, and leadership does not have a clear and specific definition. You could be an activist in Armenia, you know, constantly organizing protests, or the CEO of your own company. The goal of this scholarship is to create these accomplishments and shine a light on the beautiful leaders at UMBC Harvest. Those that normally wouldn't get acknowledged for their contributions to our community. I also want to know that this is not going to be a standing line item. The money we're proposing will act as a pilot scholarship program until we finish establishing an endowment fund through the partnership with the Office of Institutional Advancements. Lastly, I want to mention that SG officers and other student officers that usually get to see, sit at more tables won't get to apply to this scholarship. So sorry about that, y'all. <laughs> but, you know, we already frankly get our recognition and the main point of this scholarship is aimed to recognizing other student leaders and is open for all undergraduates to apply all right now shifting to the next big part of this budget um the majority of our budget really goes towards student organizations and their well-being um this comprises about 59.4 percent of our proposed budget and we were fully prepared to give our partner 
charter organizations the full amount they requested. We know how important their work is to our collective student community. Um, so we allowed them to give us their estimated values um, and budgets. The Student Events Board requested $285,000, similar to the request for the fiscal year um, previous, fiscal year 21. The Retriever requested $48,955 for this upcoming year, about $11,000 less than uh, they requested in previous years. Um, and I'm sure that the Student Events Board and the Retriever will dive deeper into the requested amounts. Um, you all may have an opportunity to see what their budgets look like. And if there isn't a presentation, we'll make sure that you get that information. Um, but we reduced club budgets from $333,000, um, which was supposed to be allocated during the current fiscal year, to $250,000. And we are expecting club expenditure to be reasonably lower um, than usual during the upcoming semester, just because of different limitations. Uh, this met this estimate really is based on the guidance that we received from the administration regarding how fall events and restrictions for in-person activities will look, um, as well as our expenditure for this current pandemic year. Um, since based on previous years, about 56% of our club budget spending happens during the spring semester. And also due to the fact that we do not yet know how spring 22 will look or manifest itself, we budgeted a full amount for the spring semester. Um, we're also introducing a new ad hoc line item for this upcoming year. Um, it's the Student Organization Atypical Reward or SOAR payment, as we like to call it for short. Um, and it's basically a stimulus check that's going out to student organizations. And we've pretty much told it up to be about $45,000. And that will be dispersed equally to all active student organization carryover accounts. The reasoning behind this award is to incentivize student organization activity and engagement with our student body. Um, it is no surprise that this year was really devastating to student organizations and their members. Um, I, you know, I've experienced that in many conversations that I've had throughout the year, but we we won't know how many student organizations discontinued until the May until May when they go through the renewal process. But I can assure you all that it is not going to be easy, especially for membership. So we're hoping to feed into student organizations as much as possible. Um, this is really going to spark an era of rejuvenation within campus life and student organizations. Uh, we predicted that an equitable amount of financial resources would incentivize creative new ways for them to engage the student body if they uh, were to do it um, in ways other than the traditional ways. Um, it is equitable, it sparks creative new ways to think about student organizations and potentially could increase a widespread sense of belonging and rounds up to really less than $250 per student organization. So that's the amount that they would have transferred over into their carryover account. Um, it might be the only funds they use for the year. Many may not even tap into it, but at least they will know that's there if they wanted to use it. Um, the SOAR ex expenditures would also be subject to the same SABSC processes as the club budget request. Um, the SOAR amounts and the awards are uh, uh, going to, in addition to the club budgets, equal to about $295,000. This is still $35,000 less than what was requested for this current fiscal year. So our university co sponsorships roughly the same, except for two line items that we'll dive into just in just a second. We are budgeted to spend a total of $24,175 on university's co sponsorships. And Joshua, I'll go ahead and do the next one too. So it was, it was a little short. Um, so as you can see from FY21, only two items have been changed. Um, first being the hydration stations in the library. Um, we spoke to Mr. Patrick Dawson and he requested a $15 increase to cover the cost of filter price increase. Um, second, we deducted about $1,000 from allocation to OCSS regarding good morning commuters. Um, with the current state of fall, we are assuming that this, the large scale food events such as good morning commuters will be scaled down if not removed altogether. Um, we reached out to every other campus partner, we could sponsor, and they all requested practically about the same amount for this upcoming year. Um, and now moving on to more SGA internal spending or stipends, um, particularly this slide. Uh, last but not least, we have our stipends. We are in paid positions. 
um, and our stipends make up about 9.4% of our total budget. Uh, we are planning to restructure our executive branch and introduce three new standing departments that will be a permanent addition to our structure. Um, these departments will satisfy the specific needs of our student body and are in, are in alignment with the values of diversity, transparency, and government relations, things that were mentioned earlier and that the SGA is trying to be more involved in. Therefore, we are proposing an increase in the cabinet stipend pot to accommodate the addition of these new incoming officers. Um, the price for a credit hour for the fiscal year 21 was $505. We are seeing a $9 increase for this coming year as we are projecting fiscal year 22 credit hours to be roughly $516. Therefore, we proposed an increase in the stipends of our elected officers based on this change. So as you can see, the stipends of all elected officers slightly increase to stay in line with this year's credit hour increase. The same is true of the appointed um, election board officers. Where we are seeing the largest increase though is a $7,000 increase in the executive branch cabinet. This year we actually used around $20,000 for this line item instead of the 18,000 that was originally proposed to us because we were noticing a need for additional student officers in order for SGA to remain operational in the COVID setting. So technically we're only requesting an additional $5,000 for this coming fiscal year. And this is for three reasons. First and foremost, we want to slightly increase the stipend per student for cabinet officers. The student these student leaders are earning less than 40% of what elector, elected officers get paid while putting in the same amount of work, if not more. Student leaders um, should not do SGA for the money, as we all know, and if they wanted to do it for money, they could make to work somewhere else and get paid minimum wage for their contributions. Um, our stipends are more of a recognition of the many hours of hard work that we dedicate to those institutions. And I can tell you that our appointed officers certainly don't get recognized as much as our elected officers. Um, this year, for example, since everything was virtual, we could not have survived if it wasn't for our Department of Communication. This team is made out of around eight officers and they work day and night to engage the student body while making less than $1,000 for their contributions. We are hoping that this increase shows these hardworking students that their, their contributions to our collective community is valued and recognized. Secondly, the credit hour increases also apply to this group. Since their stipends are usually calculated best based on their weekly hour contributions, um, but divided by four. And a third reason for the increase is to accommodate the five new executive branch positions we have in mind for next year. As I said, we're introducing a new system for SGA. We are formalizing the role of the president's cabinet and introducing standing departments that serve the student body in meaningful ways. This year, we had more than 23 appointed officers bring meaningful change to our campus. Um, from presidents in excellence to the Black Excellence Summit, I like that oh, play on board. Um, these new additions will promote continuity within SGA and the, its initiatives throughout the years. The, just to reiterate, the three standing departments are going to be the Department of Diversity and Inclusion, the Department of Communications, and the Department of Government Relations. Each is tasked with a specific and educational charge that collectively works to elevate the work of SGA. We are excited. We are so excited for, for this. Um, sorry, we are so excited to be coming out of this pandemic as a stronger entity with this addition. The proposed five thousand dollar increase will also accommodate the five new projected positions for these departments. All right, and that is the end of this presentation. I know it was long, so thank you so much for bearing with us. Um, I, I just want to thank you all, and I know Rashad and the rest of the top four, we want to thank you all for your time and your patience. These links lead to the reference documents, and I can share this presentation with anyone. Um, you have it in the chat, but if you need additional resources, please hit us up. Um, but if you have any questions or concerns or anything that you want to, to support or undergird, this is the time to do so. Um, I just wanted to say I really agree with um, whoever came up with the idea of paying um, appointed officers more money. I think that was an amazing decision, and I agree with everything that both of you said for that. I thought that SOAR was a really cool idea, and is there any thought to if it is successful perhaps 
making it not like a COVID thing, but perhaps just an, a new way of allowing students to get funds, or is it just a one-time thing? Yeah, I can I can take that question on. I think that it's really in the title, and I think that this is really a main selling point when we meet with uh, the second review committee. Um, it's an atypical reward, so it's just going to be given to the student organizations in times of trouble or difficulty, like the transition back to in person setting. Um, so I don't think, and I personally am not in a grant with this being like an annual award. I think that there are other mechanisms for student organizations to tap into funding, like finance board, when that's under its full operational status. This is um this is like a little bit different than the budget, but it's it's sort of along the same lines of the of the SOAR. Um, is there are there going to be trainings for student organizations like make sure like oh you, here's like all this money, here's how to use like the the packages through Common Vision for like banners and media. Um, here's how to like do recruitment stuff. Like are are we going to be focusing on those things as well? Yeah, Michelle, that's like great summer work. Collaborating with uh, David and Common Vision and all these, all these other places on campus. Yeah. yeah. I'll go Josh, do you want to take a stab at it and then I'll go after you? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that, you know, that's a great idea. Um, trying to figure out how we can not only give the money, but also give resources on how to use the money and tap into it. So it doesn't, doesn't just end up sitting in someone's account, but they have the the ability and the the knowledge to know how to navigate spending it. Um, so something that we haven't spoken about, um, I know the idea initially in the finance board, there weren't any conversations around it in the finance board, but I definitely have jotted it down. And I think that that's a great idea and definitely something that we can work with SBSC on, something we can work with Common Vision on, and just more folks in DOSA. And regarding the SOAR benefits, correct me if I'm wrong, Joshua, but I think that they have more lenience um, regarding expenditure than the normal club budget process would, if I'm not wrong, right? Yeah, so you have quicker access to it because it's in your carryover account. So rather than having to submit a request to the finance board in a certain amount of time, let's say 30 days out to tap into $1,000 or whatever the amount is, you now can go straight to David and folks and uh, student affairs and business services um, to get access to that money. Um, plus, you don't have to worry about all the different limitations within the budgetary statutes for the finance board. You just have to worry about general university limitations. Um, I have a question. So for the good morning commuters, I think you decreased it by like a thousand dollars, I believe. Yes. Something like that. Um, and you said it was decreased because the like events you think would decrease. Is there any way for you to know if like the amount of commuter students has decreased as well, or if they've increased? And like, how would you like move around that without the events but having more commuter students? Is there data on that? I'm not entirely sure if we have access to a number of commuter students as of now, but I can definitely look into that and let you know. Um, regarding the decrease for good morning commuters, again, it was based on the guidance that we received from administration of how large scale events will look like. And if you guys do not know, good morning commuters is basically, I think, a weekly or biweekly. It was a biweekly event where commuters, um, you know, OCSS provide a free breakfast for commuters every morning. Um, Again, with the limitations that we're seeing, with the restrictions on large in-person um, events, um, especially with the limitations that comes with COVID and food, especially, um, especially consumption of food, um, you know, we just we predicted that they they would need less money for that pot, if that makes sense. Um, I also have a question. Um, you guys said that you uh, felt like there was limitations in initiative funding for the semester. Can I like get examples of that? Because honestly, I know that there's still leftover money in the pot. So I'm kind of wondering, like, basically, who's been limited by the initiative fund? So there was actually a few executive branch officers that wanted to do some some big things, but you know, right off the bat, I was like, wait, that's too big for you. <laughs> that's too much. They were requesting four thousand dollars, I think, um, 
to start a mentorship system. It was it was the Department of Extended Connection, and they wanted to pilot that system, but I didn't even think we had four thousand dollars in that pot. So you know, I told them to think of cheaper alternatives to do that. <laughs> But, um, okay, so that's a good point, but I just remember that, like, you know, also, like, just remembering my journey throughout this year as an SGA senator, I remember I started off being, being a bit, like, more um, unrealistic with some of my initiatives, and, like, again, like, it was, like, those big ideas, things were, like, it was very costly, and maybe not as, like, there was definitely other ways around it, and, like, through working with people and, like, just uh, different organizations, I was able to, like, really hone in on, like, my initiative and, like, basically find better and cheaper ways of doing it. So I just feel like, I don't know, like I just, I wasn't sure if it's completely needed, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. This is my thought just on it, this matter. Yeah. No, that's an excellent question, man. Like that, that was a really, really good question. I think um, another point as to why we're increasing that line item specifically is because we're projecting new appointed officers. Um, additional appointed officers to be joining SGA next year. Um, with these three departments are going to have very, very specific charges that are going to be needing um, money to kind of, you know, do those charges. For example, um, we're projecting that the Department of Diversity and Inclusion um, take care of the Inclusion Courtyard, you know, semesterly initiative, which is going to take around a thousand three hundred dollars, right? Um, okay. So there's going to be very structured um use of this line item next year hopefully in the executive branch in okay. addition to um, the senators and finance boards having you know access to use that as well mm -hmm. and then basically sorry can someone remind me basic uh if we have leftover funds uh it's is it like stored for next year or is it given back to the students I forgot. it rolls back into our reserves okay okay so that's yeah okay and that's completely fine i just was wondering Yeah, hit, me, uh, hit us with some more good questions. These are some really, really good questions. We're Wait, practicing okay. Practicing for have our, one more. Oops. No, you're, you're fine. I was going to say we're practicing for our presentation on Friday with SAFRB. So the harder the question, the better. Okay. Um, I was going to ask so basically one. Um, okay, this feels like. Uh, so. Has the assistant speaker and speaker of the house always been paid the same? No, I think this um, the speaker gets paid a little bit more than assistant speaker, and both of those positions get paid more than a regular senator would. Okay, yeah, I, yeah. I just I don't know. I've just been seeing like the amount of work Kai has been doing, and it's been like, like some like even when I debate either positions, I'd be like, oh, that's a lot of work. I don't know. <laughs> If I can handle it, so I wasn't sure if. Um, actually, no. Let me. Not. Actually, <laughs> Basically, I was like, I don't know. They look like they need a raise. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna correct myself on that. I think as assistant speaker and speaker get paid the same. Yeah. And Wait, was this um, previously or just for this um, new allocation? This has been uniform. It's it's oh, been okay. like this for as long as I know as she existed. <laughs> um, and they both have very specific charges. Like for example, the speaker, um, you know, is a speaker, and then the assistant speaker sits on SRC and does all those good things. Mm -hmm. So they both have very specific charges and commitments, and hence why their, um, you know, their pay is a little bit uh, larger. Also, with the credit hour increases, um. Automatically, the assistant speaker and the um, speaker's stipends would increase a little bit more than the regular standard would, just because it's percentage wise. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Hi. Okay. Um, I, I I had a question about the bike share program because I I worked that in the past and it was kind of a lot of dead ends. Um, are there, do you have any updates regarding like an improvement in the system for the bike share program? So the, um, uh, Gary actually requested the same amount, $2,000 for this coming year. They said that they are going to need that for upkeep, uh, upkeep, especially with the increased expenditure that comes from the rack renovations. They said they really appreciated $2,000 just for regular upkeep of the bike share program. I hope that satisfies your question. It does, but I wish there was more to it. That's just my. Yeah. 
Wait, I'm sorry. Just just a clarifying question. He said it cost. Because I remember, I remember me and Francis had this conversation last year. It cost two thousand dollars to maintain the program. Is what he is the answer he gave you? Yes. Does anyone feel like that's a little high? Or am I alone in this? To maintain bikes. I'm just, this is me. I'm just spitballing. That Wait, sir, can you go back to that slide? I can, I can provide a bit of context um, from what I remember when meeting Gary, like maybe two years ago on this, but uh, the reason why it's 2000 is because I, I don't know about recently um, with the whole COVID um, pandemic experience, but uh, the reason why it was so high is because people would ride those bikes through the nearby park. What's it called? Patapsco Park. And apparently the type of bike, it's not supposed to be handled in like off terrain type deals and it always damages the bike. So they would always have to either get new ones or um, repl like not replace, but maintenance it. I don't know. That that's what I was told. I remember. I definitely remember that explanation as well. But I also remember that, and I I would have to go back and look at the language. But there was an MOU that was. I don't actually know if it got it, it, the the MOU. Unfortunately, was sort of lost um, in translation during like the COVID times. Um, we were like going to meet with Gary the week that things shut down um, to discuss the MOU. But there was an MOU in the works that like we needed to scale back our financial commitment to. The bike share, so I'd have to like really dig and, and find that MOU. Um, and I don't even know if it was ever signed by Gary, but I know that there was stuff in the works to make sure that we wouldn't be paying um, that much money for like year over year, two thousand dollars for that. Like if there was needed um, repairs, that they would they could become allocations like at the year end, be like okay, like how much did you actually need to repair the bikes? Um, but it, it like if they're if the repairs are adding up to two thousand, I I mean, well I I shouldn't I shouldn't say that because I don't know if the MOU was signed, but that just it seems like a lot of money to be like repairing bikes every year. Yeah, I agree. I would want to see like what the demand looks like and if there are any numbers for like COVID statistics because that probably has changed, right? So. Just, just to inter interject real quickly, I found the MOU. I'm gonna try to drop the link in the chat. Um, I don't see a signature on it, so Patrick, I don't know if anything ever ha happened or became of it. But I think that personally, um, I am in support of the two thousand dollars, and I don't think that it's a lot. One, if we're making a commitment to make sure that we're thinking about the whole student, the whole experience, um, then physical activity, recreation is a part of that experience. So if it takes two thousand dollars to invest in a partner that's helping to bring programming and the bikes to campus, I think that that's pretty important, and that's a relationship that should be sustained. Um, and I also know that bikes are very expensive. I love to bike ride. I have a bike in my house that costs like eight hundred dollars, and if something ever happened to it, it would be very expensive to repair. Um, so. I think that that's just like the cost associated with the program, honestly. And I think that if we were to decrease the amount, then the program just wouldn't be as effective, which is unfair to athletics as well as to the student body. Yeah, and I also want to add that, you know, with the return to campus, outdoor programming, and outdoor activities are going to be a cordon store of student health and well-being. So I think us supporting this program and having a hand in saying that, hey, we, you know, we support the bike share program is really going to be important for us and the students. Um, how much usually is left over from that $2,000 or is it mostly used up pretty well? Um, I'm not sure as to how much they use it every year, but um, I'm not really sure if I can ac access those numbers either. Candice, do you have any guidance on that? We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, great. Sorry, I said something. I said a swear word when you couldn't hear me, and then now my kid is 
crying to me that I swore. Um, stop. It's fine. Relax. You went out again. You went out. <laughs> because I pressed the button to mute myself to never mind. Um, can you hear me now? Great. Typically, when you engage in a co sponsorship with a department or office um, and they are managing the program, um, you um, show a sort of like a level of trust that they are telling you what they need um, and you don't actually, you haven't in the past asked for receipts, basically. Um, and that is how you have engaged with all of your co-sponsorships. Um, that has been the, the way you have engaged with them. Um, if you would like to change that, that would be something that you could do. Um, but it would be something you would have to do across the board. So it would have to be something you do across the board with all of your co-sponsorships and all of your campus partners to say, please provide us with an accounting for the money that we have provided you, because it would not be fair to do that for one and not the other. And so at the moment, you don't do that for any, which is why you don't have hard and fast numbers from the bike share program. Yeah, I think um, it's not that, I'm not saying this because like, I don't trust the bike share program or anything like that, but I think it would be beneficial to start doing that, especially since we're transitioning and like decreasing some numbers or like increasing some. So it'd be nice to just get a little, like a track record of like what's been, what's being spent and who's spending it. So we'll have, you know, that history for next year and the years following. Cause I mean, since we don't know like how much of the 2000s being used, like that's a valid point that Patrick brought up. Like it's a good program, but if they're only using a thousand dollars, then that's a whole thousand dollars that we could be allocating somewhere else. And correct me if I'm wrong, Candace, if they don't use that money, whatever they don't use rolls back into our reserves, right? No. Oh, they have it. Okay. Correct. You the my understanding is that those are allocations that you give those departments. Um, if they don't use it, they lose it. They, the department, like, I mean, it may roll to their reserves, uh, but typically um, they're trying to use every penny they can get. Um, but, you know, the larger conversation I hear is that maybe you all need to start thinking about sort of a more intentional accounting for the money that you allocate to your, to um, your university partners. Yeah, and that's certainly a conversation that I can have with Siri um, regarding that. Definitely. Some good feedback. Thank you for that cash, guys. Any other questions? Anything? Hit us with anything. The hardest thing you can think of. Do y'all feel pre prepared for the real one? <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm also going to challenge that. This is the real one. You guys are. That's what I was saying. Yeah. That's a real one. Yes. I guess like the main thing that I could see them raising is the whole like, like 11.5K for the initiative fund. Um, Will they check uh, like how much money from this year's 6,000 has been used? Because I could see them arguing that, oh, like we didn't use that much money now. So like, how can we say that like senators didn't explore like more expensive initiatives when there's still money left over? If I explain that, okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, I'm, I might actually change a script to take that out, <laughs> even though it's true. Um, you know, it brings up a lot of questions. So, um, you know, again, that initiative upon in increase is not to, um, 
is not to allow more room for more in expensive initiatives, it's to allow room for the increase in number of initiatives, since there's going to be more appointed officers and executive branch, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes total sense. So in, in theory, there will be over you know 60 officers next year um, that could potentially work with $11,000 initiative funds. And our ability to use that money is going to be so much more elevated in this year because we have restrictions with COVID and so many of those restrictions won't, you know, apply to an in-person environment. That was very convincing. I think you two are pretty pre prepared. All right, and before we uh, close out, if there aren't any more questions, I do want to address Z's comment in the chat. Um, for creating a position to audit our expenditures to different campus partners. I think that that's something for the next treasurer to take up. Um, I will say that's very shaky territory because just think about the IRS and their audits, right? Like that takes away a degree of autonomy from the person that's doing the act that has the business that's, you know, carrying out the initiative. Um, Rashad, we definitely have to talk about that tomorrow during our top four meeting. Um, but yeah, that's something that the next treasurer can think about and we can chat um, with Siri to see if she has any proposals for now. Definitely. And a counter argument to that is that the person who initially drafts an MOU with, you know, with the uh, campus partner they're allocating money to is supposed to actually detail out the expenditures um, line by line for that, right? It's not just an arbitrary number that you're advocating. Um, for example, for the bike share program, I'm, I'm sure that there is a detailed explanation somewhere as to why we're giving them $2,000. Um, Kai, you started that program, right? Um, uh, do you have any idea as to what the detailed number for those, you know, $2,000 goes to, if anything? I'm just wondering. If you don't, that's fine. I'm just wondering um, if you were the initial person that created that MOU. For the um, free menstrual products? No, no, bike share program. Bike share program? Yeah. I know you did. Uh, I was just mentioning that I know you did a cost breakdown for the free menstrual product initiative and, you know, the exact precise cost breakdown. I was wondering if, you know, in, in the drive or anywhere, you have anything like that for the bike share program. If not, that's fine. You you know, just put you on the spot like. I, I do, but that was more in terms of expanding the bike share program to uh, city bikes, and we were on track with that, but uh, Lynn Schaefer shot it down last minute, and we were all very sad. <laughs> um, it was it was going to be increased to 4,000 um, to, to put um, three different city bikes uh, racks uh, in different areas of the campus one of which was supposed to be outside of Okamoka. And this is the time when Okamoka was about to open to a whole lot of back and forth, but Lynn Schaefer shot it down last minute. Sad. That is sad. What can you do? Bureaucracy. Yeah. Any other concerns, questions, comments? All right, well, we appreciate y'all, you know, listening to us and the detailed presentation. Um, I'll stick around a little bit for the legislation, but then if after that, any questions that y'all have, you can just, as always, shoot me a text or an email and I will answer it. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you both, Marshad and Joshua, for, for that wonderful presentation. And we are, we loved it. <laughs> I, I loved it. We all loved it. Um, Next, we will move on to the legislation aspect of this. And correct me if I'm wrong, but are we able to, is this the, the part in which we are able to um, amend each line item? Yes. Yes, okay, so. You'd have to, you'd have to move to amend um, the budget and then you'd have to vote on that amendment. Um, and then, once all of the amendments have been voted on, you'd have to move to pass the entire budget. Um, does that make sense? CCC? And then I would also encourage you to have a period of discussion. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, yeah, so I know uh, there were some um, concerns, especially with the bike share program and some concerns with the um, initiative pot increase. 
of more than double or around double. Um, and now here we have the power to um, amend such items or have any discussions behind that. So um, what do y'all think? I'm in favor of passing the budget as is. Um, I'm also in favor. I motion to pass. Is that how it works, right? Move to. Well, you can if you want to. <laughs> if there are no more discussion points to be made, if we're on like in a general consensus of in favor of passing it. I think if I had to vote like right now, um, I'd probably be just in in favor of passing the budget. Okay, I I I I I'm hearing like a lot of uh, favor. So, is there a motion on the table? Okay, yeah, I move to approve the budget. Second. Uh, so it's what is the uh, legislation number? JL twenty two dash twenty twenty one. Yeah, you got to read the whole legislation number and the name for the record. <laughs> oh, okay. I move to approve JL 20. What was it? 2020. Okay. I wait, 20, 22, 21. Okay. In the budget for the budget. Is there a second? <laughs> Yes. Okay. Patrick's is second in the chat. So all those um, in favor of, please type in I in the chat. Oh, I have to do that as well. All right. I see 11. Cool. So number centers for is 11, there are zero opposed, zero abstaining, and zero not present, and this passes the Senate. Uh, exciting things, and I can't wait to um, see this come into fruition through SA, what is it, SAFRB? Thanks, everyone. Wish us luck for SAFRB. See you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Well, um, I'm glad that we had uh, such a great discussion and much more clarity on the budget. Um, I, I had like so many notes, but it was answered throughout. So wonderful. Next, we will go on to the JR09-2021, the amendment to the MCE. Uh, Wendy or Patrick, would you like to speak more about this? Yeah, um, Kai, are you able to screen share? I cannot screen share. Do you mind if I screen share? Please do. Okay, so, um, can everyone see this? Okay, great. So, um, first of all, I apologize because when this was passed, I was in the mountains and I did not have service. So that is on me for not amending it while this was being passed. But um, I wanted to do some extra research and have this JR reflect that. Um, so I added everything in red and wait, let me see. Again. And I just wanted to like link some sources and some hard numbers to support what we were pushing for, um, as well as like just some like grammar things. I'm also going to put this link in the chat, actually. Um, so if anyone has questions or like recommendations or any other comments, I'm always. This is like a general curiosity. Has the other JR already been circulated through to the other sentence or? Um, I haven't presented it. 
Um, I just saw that it was passed from both Senate and Finance Board, but I'm not sure if anything else has come of it. Oh, just like my understanding that like once a joint resolution is passed, it, like it must be passed on to the other Senates. So I wasn't sure if that had been done yet. And this would just um, be like, oh, yeah. this is an addition or this would be sent in, instead of it. Yeah, this would be instead, I think. Gotcha. It looks good. Um, it also looks good to me too. I just had a question. So at the very end, you guys mentioned other alternate or other alternatives. Um, can you talk a little bit more about that again? Like what those alternatives could be? Um, the reason I said explore alternative investments is mostly just because like, I'm honestly not sure what that would look like because I don't know like who is in charge of like the financial decisions and like other furniture, but I was thinking just like buying furniture from non MCE sources. So just like any other system that doesn't like actively exploit people. Okay, that sounds good. Everything else looks good. Um, is it like common practice to like cite things in JRs or like have like references or anything? I just don't want to like throw these numbers out for like no reason. But I also know that the final thing will be in like PDF form, so it won't include like this. Like no links. Links show up in PDF. They do. Wow. Okay. I don't know technology. Thanks for that. That is that is a good question. I don't know, Candice. Do you know more about that I, in terms of citing within a resolution? It's totally fine to cite things in a resolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally fine. See, as long as it follows APA. Um, yeah, after reading this, I see no changes to be made. I move to JR 09-2021. Second. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Uh, all those in favor, please type I in the chat. Oh, I have to do that also, but my computer is frozen so i'm kind of scared and i think that is 11 eyes so number of senators for is 11 zero opposed is zero standing is zero not present is zero and this passes the senate cool wonderful 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 uh wendy or patrick do you, have y'all communicated this to sierra for tomorrow uh, yes, I messaged her through WebEx Teams, and then I also like shared the document with her with like a note through her email. Hopefully, she sees it and responds because I don't have her number. Um, yeah, I can. Um, I can send this her way as well. But yes, um, if this were to go through Finance Board, I can ensure this goes to. University Steering Committee and for our Senator reports. That's all the reports um, each Senate submits. Cool. All right. Wonderful, wonderful. Moving on, uh, we are a bit behind on time, so I do apologize for that, but I believe it's meaningful for us to discuss thoroughly about our budget and um, brief JR that we discussed. So let's move on to Senator initiatives. Um, and I would like to uh, start with Z because I'm really interested on how your 
uh, event this past week went, I know there was a bit of a bumpy uh, hiccup with um, links and stuff. So I just wanted to hear in general how it went. Yeah, it was definitely, we definitely did not get a lot of people. I think maybe only one or two of the rooms actually had actual visitors in them. We had five people enter the raffle for the door prizes, but I noticed that one of them was the employee of OEI that came to speak, so I don't think she's eligible. No. So yeah, it was definitely, definitely I feel like it definitely could have gone a lot better, but we did get a few people and that's about it. Yeah, um, as long as it helps um, at least one person, then I believe that it's always meaningful um, if it if it um, if something is able to help some one person. All right, um, I know we are starting to wind down with our last Senate meeting coming up on the tenth. Um, is there anything else you would like to work on? Um, between now and then, or have you thought of anything else to work on in between now and then? Is that a general question or a question directed to towards Z? It was a question directed towards Z. Sorry, I could have. Yes, I wasn't sure about that. I'm I, mostly just together all I'm going to be working on. Yes, and they will be coming in next week. So exciting things. Um, all right. Well, I'm, I'm uh, sorry to hear uh, not a lot of people joined, but I'm glad to hear that um, a few were able to participate. Um, so overall, I congratulate. Uh, Jessica, do you mind giving us your update? Hi. Uh, posts will be up. This week, I thought they were coming last week. I forgot we like pushed it back to give them more time. Um, and then second initiative would just be Lucy coming in when she comes in, but she's not here yet. So I'm kind of like, mm, but also, you know, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, Lucy will be coming in um, in two weeks from now. Oh, is that in two weeks? Oh, never mind. I thought it was today. I was like, huh? No. <laughs> um, cool. Julius. Okay. Um, all right. So last week I had met with um, Ms. Christine Powers, and she's um, one of the ad academic advisors for um, CMS. And we talked a bit about different um, advocate, ab advocate, <laughs> academic ab advocacy and advising programs that are happening. She's trying to work on a peer mentor program for CMS that's supposed to um, debut a year from now. And she had asked for my, um, I guess my um, cooperation in working with it over the summer. So that's something that I'll probably be doing, I guess, beyond being a Senator. Um, she also gave me a few contacts to get connected with um, a lady by the name of Miss Amanda Sharp, who works in academic advocacy. Um, she is debuting some sort of program in the fall, and um, I had emailed her today to ask about a potential collaboration and seeing if I can incorporate my proposal with whatever she's doing. And also, I was able to get in contact, finally get in contact with um, Mr. James Hamilton, and I have a meeting with him on Friday to discuss the proposal. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's just working. It's still working out the finer, uh, kinks within the proposal it can be quite challenging. Yeah, the general consensus, like I gather from her, she loves the proposal and things like that. It's just a matter of imp just implementing at this point. That's always been the consensus. She says she's seen similar things like this beforehand. Mine is very. I guess detailed and conclusive because of the background information I had because we had a conversation about um, VCU, which I gathered 
the inspiration of this proposal was from in the first place and she knew already knew about it and knew the benefits of their program and seeing that it's something that can be really useful at UMBC, but it's just a matter of placing it somewhere because the different college of majors operate differently in a sense. And um, without saying too much, um, it seems that cash will probably benefit the most from it, from what I've gathered from what she had told me. So that's where we're focusing on now. COVID hasn't responded back to me with any regards to that. Um, I'll probably reach back out to people over there at some point in time this week as well. Cool. Um, thanks, Julius. Uh, Wendy. So on Friday, I had a meeting with the Divest MCE group that I've been working with. So here are the meeting notes if anyone wants to look through them. That's just like a quick summary of things that we've discussed. And there is an inclusion council meeting um, on the 15th. Um, so I hadn't been involved from that side of things. So I was only just hearing about it on the 9th, but um, I've emailed someone asking to like see if she can send me the contact info and if I can sit in on that, if that works with my schedule, because I know that um, some people have been working on this case statement to present during that meeting. And so while personally, I uh, won't be like presenting this, um, this is probably a good reference for like how um, they plan on framing this issue. And then we've been working on um, like a kind of like a storyboard for like a short, like one or two minute video presenting the topic of like Divest MCE, just so it's like a little bit more engaging. Um, so there's already been a script, but now we've just been like working through some graphic design flaws and just like the amount of like creative freedom that we have because there's just a couple of issues with that. Um, and then with establishing the student org, um, I'm not sure, but is there like a certain date that we're allowed to like register like a new org? Because I know for a while, like we weren't allowed to. Because I know we've been like working on like documents that we need, but I haven't looked into like meeting with Courtney Campbell or um, Tori Easley. Yeah, so the um, student organization committee, which is um, a couple of campus life people and then actually students from SGA, um, they voted at the beginning of the semester to continue the pause on new student organizations. So we will meet again um, in the beginning of fall once those students are appointed. Um, through your appointment process. Um, and then once they are appointed, we would meet to re reconsider that pause. So I would say that the, um, the process would be open again, probably in late September. Um, and then the, um, the coordinators would start to process through um, any applications that they had in the queue. So you could go ahead and complete all of your stuff and submit it to be in like the waiting room, um, so to speak. Um, and then once the SOC votes, if they do vote to um, lift the like temporary pause on new orgs, um, which I think they would, but I don't wanna speak out of turn. Um, then you would be able to begin that process with um, with Courtney and Tori. All right, sounds good, thank you. Mm -hmm. Cool, thanks, Wendy. Um, Mati. Yes, yeah, so um, last week, I finally got in touch with Ashley from the comms department. And while I was speaking with them, you know, I told Ashley um, about the trans initiative and how I wanted to use um, the comms department to help with basically spreading the idea. And I also shared the idea of speaking with um, with Maria about getting a, a route to connect between Shady Group and the main campus. So um, I gave them a copy of the initiative, what I'm trying to do. So Ashley's planning to share that with the comms department and other 
student orgs that they are affiliated with to get the word out about what transit is doing. And I booked, um, I've reached out to Mr. Teague and Mr. Riger, and so I booked two meetings with them this Friday to speak with them about the addition the additional route between Shady Group and the main campus, because I realized what Mariah was saying is a really good thing that's needed to kind of like connect campuses. Because when speaking with Ashley, um, they said that there are students who have courses that they can't find the main campus, but they take it at Shady Group. And so having that route that connects both campuses will be pretty good. And so that's another one that I want to get um, started on before the end of the semester. And yeah. Oh, wonderful. I'm glad that um, Dana T was able to respond um, back. And I look forward to hearing your updates from, from this meeting. Um, cool. Thanks, Mati. Reese. Yeah, so at the suggestion of Mershad, I added the ability to you import your GPA from your unofficial transcript on the GPA calculator app which I will link in the chat. And then also at Wendy's recommendation, I added a section which I type, which I call the GPA coach, which allows you to uh, enter in your target GPA and then however many credits you plan on taking and it'll say over X amount of credits, you will need it, you will need Y GPA to get this target GPA. Which is which is quite funny and sometimes demotivating because it's like, uh, for thirty credits you need a six point oh GPA to to get a three point eight. You're like, yeah, that's not going to happen. So it's a very interesting, and I'm planning on adding like a few more things, like telling you like if you qualify for Latin honors, if you have if you are like reaching the threshold for eligible for a merit scholarship eligibility. Target science GPA. What do you mean by that, Mena? Um, so, so like how you said that you have a target, um, like GPA, like what you would need for your target GPA. Can you include one for a science GPA as well? Like wh how many courses or credits and grades do you need to like get your, do you know what a science GPA is? Sorry. No, nothing. Oh, sorry. Okay. This might be a pre-med thing. <laughs> Um, but they, um, it's just basically only your science classes. So math, um, physics, biology, and chemistry count as towards your science GPA. I know this would really help the pre-med uh, population on campus. Oh yeah, I can do that. That's not a, so could you like link me a doc? Could you find like a document, like the pre-med advising or something like that? Just so I could like make sure I know what I'm talking about. Cause it's, it's it would be just like saying like, if it is math or science, but I would just need to. Yeah, of course. I'm gonna look oh, yes. now. Beautiful. What do you mean by automate the process? Like finding the science GPA? Yeah, like when you're importing things from your transcript, um, is there any way that you can have like some sort of like classification of classes that fall under that, or like you have to like it? manually like yeah, exactly, or like manually like select and remember like each course? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're making all kinds of work for Reese. He's like, give me the give me the use case, please. <laughs> <laughs> I need some glasses. I need some glasses. Um, yeah, so I'm glad that we got another use case, another a little, and then I think I'm going to create a spin off of this app that just lets you play around with your general transcript data like maybe some like bar charts saying like this is how many a's this is how many b's stuff like that just there'll be like less utility based as in like like here but like it would just be something that would allow students to have control over the data and kind of see trends or whatnot i don't know i'm still playing around with that idea but the one that i'm most excited for is what i call grit map so well, uh, so, so the real OGs know a uh, nap map, and that one was really janky. I basically took a picture of the of the UMC map, and I just like made that the background of the web page and like listened for clicks. But then my friend Nicola, he runs the Software Developers Club. They created a a map for UMC, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that actual map, 
I'm going to put the, all right, thank you, man. I'm going to put the nap positions on there, but I'll also, this is the killer feature. I'm going to try to import my UBC events. So if you click on any building, you'd be like, this is what uh, events are going on in this building at X days. And then also for the dining buildings, I'll say, oh, here's the menu for today. And, you know, maybe I'll add GPS. I don't think I, that's, that's not realistic, but I just move, shoot for the moon. So I'm trying to make it like the ultimate map for UBC. Well, actually, I have the laundry data. So maybe I could do the, the, the laundry machines too. Uh, or show transit. So many, so many things. But yeah, I don't know if I'll be able to accomplish that. So yeah, I'm glad. I would maybe work over this, uh, work on this over the summer, just because it's a bit of a large undertaking. But I think the fresh, the fresh people with the, the first years rather would would uh, benefit from this the most. Oh, menstrual location. See, there's so many different points of uh, geographical interest that we could uh, add. Man, Collier is going to be afraid of the job soon. Oh, I should actually talk to Collier. Oh, okay. Yeah, Reese, that's, that's, I'm going to emphasize you at least. That's tough. Um, I'm more than impressed. And shout out to Reese because you, you created the, um, you revamped your GPA thing like two or three days right after you introduced it to us. So that's honestly amazing. <laughs> I like to be agile. So if anyone ever has any app ideas within reasonable bounds, of course, I'm, I'm not trying to make money. It's just like, if, if, it, if it helps the students, I'll create it or I'll try to at least. And then also Wendy and B and I are going to meet about my uh, brainstorming initiatives workshop type. We're just like trying to how to identify problems at UMC and how to ideate quickly on how to make like prototypes for ideas. I don't know, but that's going that's something that's going to be worked around. Maybe kick off a leadership series or something like that. Wow, that's. That's tough, Reese. Um, uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for your update. Um, I can't wait to see um, your SG apps and your leadership course throughout the, this next year, if I'm still here. Um, Maria. Um, so Monty already kind of talked about this before, um, but kind of an update on the transit. Uh, I guess issue with the lack of shuttle service from Trinity Group to UMBC. So I did reach out to um, Daniel from Transit, and so he let us know that the process for it is underway. Um, so like the process for it was like they were basically getting like a University of Shady Grove shuttle pre-COVID, and it just got delayed because of COVID. Um, and so right now they're just in the process with like getting it approved uh, with financial services again. Um, but it's under control, so that was really nice to hear. And it was really nice to check in about. So I think we will be able to see it come to fruition in this upcoming semester or spring 2022, I think at the absolute latest. Um, so that's what I got from that. Um, and I know that I haven't talked about this initiative in a while, but for the survivor's advocate, the work for that has been very steady. And um, I just haven't brought it up too much because it's been like a really long process. So this past week, the report outlining different respondent services that could be implemented. Uh, to kind of get around the legalities of the situation that was submitted, or that's actually, it wasn't submitted yet, but it's being worked on to be submitted to the Inclusion Council. Um, I can link like a copy of it. Anybody wants to check it out. But the deadline, I believe, is May 7th. So like we're just steadily working on those, like finalization of the reports and the recommendations and stuff like that. So. Um, that's pretty much what I have for initiative updates. Oh, and also the Ramadan stuff went up last week. So if you haven't checked that out, please do. Um, and I think Mena and I are just going to talk to the retriever about it sometime this week just to get the word out because a lot of Muslim students reached out about how they felt included and seen by SGA. So that was nice to hear. Yes, I, I'm, I want to emphasize Mena's comment. Um, you're amazing for working on this for so long. Um, 
do you have a point of contact to uh, communicate towards the retriever? Um, yes, I am forgetting her name, but they reached out today and we're going to be interviewing with them later this week. Oh, wonderful. Not Anjali, it was somebody else. Um, let me find the email. I think her name was Brittany. Oh, right. No, Kylie, Kylie Potter. Uh -huh. Well, exciting. And I'll be sure to take that newspaper and make a collage out of it with all the fun stuff. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, yes, thank you so much, Maria. And next is Meta. Um, okay, so my, my comment was on uh, your um, Title X survivor advocacy. Um, like, I just really think that was so amazing that you've been working on this for this long and staying on top of like, staying in progress with that. Um, and also, like Mariah said, our the Ramadan uh, initiative, like, sorry, it wasn't, it was a really small initiative, but still uh, the advocacy for that, like, it was just one amazing because I got so many comments. Um, and then I just saw a lot more people who aren't even Muslim, like repost and like saying that they like felt proud of UMBC for it. So I think that was just like, honestly, it was amazing because my Ramadan two years ago was um, when it was on campus. And that was the first time it's been on, um, sorry, first time in like maybe years that like Ramadan was during the school year. And I just, I don't know, it wasn't like I, like definitely dining was like, that next to like useless for me during that time. I had a full meal plan at, like during that time period. So like, I don't know, just seeing a lot of the uh, feedback on that was amazing. So yeah, that was great. And um, as for uh, my compost initiative, honestly, it's been, um, there's just been a lot of delays with uh, moving the budgeting. Um, I'm not really sure why it's, it was approved, but um, there seems to be an issue with the just, uh, Sorry, it was an extra delay, like it was an extra week delay, but I'm kind of surprised it's taking this long this because it was already approved um, on like David already approved it too, but for some reason connecting RSA and um, SJ and moving forward with that, uh, combining their um, allocations uh, has given me some trouble. And like, because of that, we are only going to be able to run the initiative for three weeks and I still haven't heard back from David. So I'm a little worried if this is going to be worth it anymore because if we can't get it and even if we get it under three weeks, it might we might have to start thinking about canceling it and leaving it for next semester instead, since that's too short of a period to run a pilot. Um, but besides that, <laughs> um, well, that's basically my biggest concern for that. Um, and also, I don't I haven't had any luck get, uh, reaching out to the communications department and I've submitted a, like a, a request like over two weeks ago, so I'm a little bit like concern on why they haven't, uh, I reached out to them recently over the weekend. So I'm just going to also wait for them to, uh, like I, I created the poster, so I just really want them just to repost that and like repost the interest uh, form. So if you guys also know anyone on, um, anyone on campus, please share the uh, interest form and I'd really appreciate that. Um, yeah, uh, David, um, I, I, I think it's, it's still useful, um, beneficial to bring this out from the end of this semester and maybe it can possibly bleed into the summer session with those who live in, um, live on campus during the summer. The problem is, is it's really hard to get these uh, students to sign up for it. Um, so it would be even harder. <laughs> I don't know how summer session would work. And I really don't want to push, uh, I don't want to postpone this. just because either way, I see that UMBC doesn't, um, all the compost buckets will be reused and will only the bags will really go to waste. And like, again, there's basically not much that UMBC has to lose from having the initiative uh, go into play this year. So. I'm gonna try to hold on to that, but I'm I, I think I'm getting scared that like uh for of sustainability might want to push this back into next semester. They made a comment before about it, and I honestly did agree because 
at that point, things weren't looking good in the sense of like, if we can't get our order processed this week, then it's basically over because it takes at least a week for the shipping to, uh, for our products to be shipped. And that will leave less than two weeks. So yeah, mm -hmm. and then also I have a little bit of trouble promoting this. So we'll see how that goes. But either way, I think it will be like, next semester it will go over a lot more smoothly so because of this like early on the semester we have a lot of time to promote it there's a lot more students living on campus so it won't be as big of a thing get reaching out to them and yeah <laughs> that's true um building the foundation for the fall especially with more in person yes um yeah Meta, I'll, I'll i'll check back in with you later this week to to see um, what we can do going forward, but um, thank you so much for your update. Um, Naila Benane, do you mind going next? Um, sure, and Mina, I got a response from Ash, and they said that they can check first thing in the morning, but they don't remember getting a form, so maybe the form never went through. They said they haven't had any forms for like a week being submitted, so maybe like check in on that and um, see if it went through and then also like maybe like email them <laughs> i don't know yeah, but i i emailed this weekend just to like because i started fearing that maybe my form wasn't submitted so i maybe that is the problem even though i do remember it being submitted uh clearly but uh, i did reach out to them this email but i i appreciate you getting in contact with her again no problem <laughs> um yeah for my initiative is it okay if i share the screen share my screen Okay, thank you. Let me make sure this is the right one. Okay, can you all see? So for my initiative, I was doing um, a student experience survey for Asian students at UMBC. Um, and basically I'm working on this with Catherine um, cause she's a member of KSA. So like it was a good way to kind of get that organization like off the bat to support. Um, basically, what this the purpose of this is is since I know UMBC has held a lot of um, like safe space quote unquote events and a lot of um, things for Asian students and also with the recent attacks and everything like that, I just know it's a really hard time mentally. And since we're online, it's even more um, I guess isolated. So I wanted to create a survey to kind of give Asian students a chance to express themselves and. Um, like be honest about how they feel about these events and if they're being, if they're effective or if they kind of feel like maybe there's different things that can be changed or improved upon or maybe like cut out completely. So if it happens again, or if UMBC like is trying to implement more stuff like this, it can be better um, received. So um, this is like kind of the prompt that's gonna be on this form. I'm gonna do a Google survey form and make it anonymous, like completely anonymous. Um, during the initiative workshop, I think it was Julius, Wendy, and Reese gave like really good input about like how it should be formatted and things like that. Um, we're gonna do like an agree to disagree format. And also like, if you answer yes to some questions, you can explain why if comfortable. Um, so far we've had like the go, like people are participating from KSA, Chinese Student Organization, FASA, um, VSA, and ADK Phi. And so far, these are just questions from, I think, three orgs. So we're still waiting on others, but we plan to collect questions. Oh, also, <laughs> I, sorry, I skipped over it. But the questions are going to be written by um, Asian students, like for Asian students. So it's really just like them um, making what, like, I guess, creating what they need to be answered, I guess, if that makes sense. So it's not like someone who's like not a part of that community, just like asking them things that aren't really hitting the spots that need to be touched on so they can create that conversation and form it the way they need to be formed. Um, so these are some of the questions that we have so far. And I think I'm gonna narrow it down to maybe like 15 questions just because I don't want it to be like mentally draining just to fill it out. And I'm already having them kind of like make the questions as well. So I'm planning on collecting questions all through the 16th, which is this Friday, and then sending it out the following 19th and collecting responses through the 23rd. And hopefully I will be able to send those responses to I3B. And I think it's civic democracy, I'm forgetting the name, but David and Romy, um, I'll send it to them as well as, yes, thank you, Jessica, democracy and civic life. 
as well as any other organization that would like need this kind of data. So yes, if you would like to like give feedback as to like the structure and everything, like feel free to do that and let me know. And also if you are Asian or in an Asian student org or like know an Asian student org that I didn't mention who would like to participate, um, I'm gonna put the link in the chat. It's a free open edit link. So you can just email it to them and be like, hey, I thought, you know, you might like to do this. Um, I think I've reached out pretty much to the majority of them, but a lot of people are, you know, not on their emails. So that's understandable. But yeah, so far that's kind of how my initiative is coming along. That's wonderful. Um, uh, ha have you um, contacted comms department to put this out on the week of the 19th? Um, I am not going to do it through, like, I don't know if I want it to be like, I don't know. <laughs> I really, cause I think when I was talking over with Catherine and, um, VSA, I just really wanted, I don't want it to be anything that like faculty can like get a hold of before the responses are, I really wanted to feel like very safe and anonymous and just like, so they can be as honest as possible. So I'm going to be sending it out like through the channels that I'm using as ready, like discord email and just mm -hmm. gathering responses that way. Um, once the responses are like gathered, I don't mind like maybe working with comps to like share them out broadly, but that's kind of like the plan now, Candice. <laughs> I'm so used to doing like in finance board, we just type me and then that's how we <laughs> raise our hands. Um, so I don't think that this, the, so I was just briefly reading over the questions. Um, I don't, I'm not 100% sure. So this is why I'm going to ask you to ask them. I don't think that this has to go through IRB, um, but I would double check with them. IRB institutional um, institutional uh, review. Board. Institu oh yeah. Yes. So um, I don't think it does, but just to be sure, because um, and I was I was just reading over the questions I, I, again. I'm not 100%. And anytime I'm not 100%, I just tell people to ask. Mostly the kinds of things that you all send out are about are about like program evaluations or like how thing how a how a like process is going or if people know about something. Um, but the some of those questions ask I, again. I don't know, um, but I just want to make sure that if it does, then you do, and if it doesn't, then you're good to go. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. So, like, let's say I email them and it does have to go through them. What would they have to like play a hand in, it or would they just be like give me the okay to send it out in general? Yeah. So there would be a process through which you would have to go to to get approved by IRB. Um, okay. So I would here's I would say um, to just ask them hold on let me click over here i'll send you their website um again because most of the things that they say don't need approval are things that collect information about policies practices practices or procedures um that document on reports, events, situations, policies, institutions, or systems without the intent to form a hypothesis, right? So that I think is the, it's depending on what you want to do with this information. Um, so like I would, I mean, it, um, it, I mean, IRB is most, just ask them. So uh, let me send you some stuff. <laughs> I, I'm not an expert. What I do know is that what, most of the time when you ask questions as SGA to people, it's about what do you think about this thing that they're doing over there? Um, or how have, do you know about the pro, this, you know, process or procedure that we're doing? Or how did we do on X? Like that kind of stuff doesn't need IRB. Um, but um, just from, again, your, your, some of your questions are around like um, their experience their the person's experience um, 
and I don't know if you were, I just, just ask them for them to be able, I would say just for them to be able to say, no, nah, you don't need us. And then you're like, cool. Everybody said, we don't need you. That's great. So let me, I'll send it to you. I have a question. I'm Candice. I remember I asked you about IRB for like the Qualtrics survey for financial products. And then it was like something related to like a university initiative. So like, could that possibly apply for an Albanese case? I don't know. I mean, so the question that you were asking was around like a program. So you're trying to launch, do a program, um, specifically the, in, the um, free menstrual products. So that's um, why it wouldn't apply. Um, but I can't see the questions again. They're not, uh, is it in here? Oh yeah. I, yeah I, you I linked it. Cool, 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 cool. Um, continue. Hold on, I'm just talking to myself as I click on the links in here. Um, yeah. So I guess the question is, are you trying to form any kind of hypotheses by having these, like from the answers of these questions, or are you just reporting out the answers of the questions? Would um, be, yeah, I, so I, I merely am just like a messenger for okay. this. I don't want to okay. like okay. close anyone. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, answers tend to be on the Google form or like a general consensus. That's what I'd be sending out just to better inform I3B and um, whoever else is hosting an event or like, the faculty, things like that on how Asian students are really feeling with these processes. So that's kind of the main goal. I don't think I want to form like a hypothesis or yeah. like a general. I think, I think if you, I th okay, so that helps me answer your question. So I think if you were just to say, okay, we asked these questions and here are the answers, do with them, you know, we're not going to form a hypothesis. But, you know, as you can see, 97% of the people said, yes, we think this, um, the support feels superficial. 97% of them said that. So it's not, a, you're not forming a hypothesis, you're just presenting the data. I think that you'll be okay. So I wouldn't need IRB if I'm just presenting data. That's what I am gathering from this. Um, but they said that, um, They let you know in one to two days, but just, uh, I think you're okay. I'm sorry. I'm thinking out loud as I'm ask, answering these questions. No, it's okay. I don't want anything to take back. Be okay. It's like at the end of, yeah. the, end of the month. So, and yeah. I don't want this I think to happen okay. during exams. Right, 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 right. I think it'll be okay. Why there people such as prison or news, da, 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 such as interview practices or policies. Or I think it's fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, <laughs> thank you for sorry, talking. Sorry, I think out loud. I'm really sorry. So, but I, okay. Well, that's good because okay. if I did them, then I'd be in trouble. So, thank you. Oh, you're not in trouble. Okay, I'm going to mute myself now. Bye. Um, so, does anyone else like have any questions about this or like any, I guess, qualms about it? I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Oh, wait, yeah, I just thought of something. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, that was just like, oh, this looks great. But um, do you think people will know, like, what emotional labor is? Like, do you do maybe, like, want to, like, explain that? And also, like, were you planning on having, like, an optional, like, is there anything else you want to add? Or, like, like, what would, like, help you? Or just, like, an optional, like, free response thing at the end? Because I feel like most people would skip it. Especially if you like put parentheses that it's like optional. So I don't think it'll be like any sort of barrier to people doing this. Yeah. So these questions are um, merely. Oh, what's happening? Oh, <laughs> I saw the dog turn yellow and I was like, what? That's me. Okay. That's that question is unfinished. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, thank you. So um, I don't know if I said it before, but it's in, I think it's like in the text a little bit if you like read it. Um, the questions, basically, what I'm doing is I'm sending out like, a like like the premise of this survey and things like that and then the students of the asian orgs are the ones forming those questions so um 
I do know exactly who wrote the emotional labor question. So I will go and ask her to give more detail into that because we don't want to assume that everyone knows exactly what that means. And that could um, edit, like, cause an error in the response. Um, but I think I do want to add a disclaimer as well, because now that I'm thinking about it, I really hate when people try and spread information with like academic jargon or like words that aren't easily accessible. So I'll probably put a disclaimer to say, like, make sure all your questions are accessible in language and comprehension and things like that. Um, and yeah, I think on Sunday, we also talked about having like maybe one or two open response questions at the end, just if people didn't feel like the questions were indicative of how they felt, they could type their own little response. And I'll probably put a word limit of like 100, just so it's not too much. Um, well, actually, no, I don't want to limit that. So I'm just going to keep it open-ended. So if anyone has like any other thing they want to add, they can do an open response to a question. Um, I'm probably going to write one of them myself just because I have a very specific event I want to ask about that I was present for. But other than that, everything's being created like by the students and it'll be sent back out to them so they can um, actively like participate and form their own voice of what they think is going on. I also like just to clarify. So when you said like in the description, if you would like to add open response questions, you can do that as well. Um, do you just mean like in those like optional boxes, like after each question, you're going to have like a, like, feel free to elaborate kind of thing? Because I feel like I was a little confused just reading that sentence. Oh, uh, okay. Wait, let me read. If you would like. Oh, right here. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm so going to say like just a regular open response question towards the end of the survey. But if that is confusion, I will say like, well, I think. What I'm going to do is make sure it's like more defined towards like just a question because I'm going to go in as the editor of the forum and do the whole if yes explain. I think Reese is the one who suggested that. So I will do that so they don't have to worry about that, but I will make that more clear that it's just like an optional. Um, okay, sounds good. Yeah, I think this is probably just because like I'm just looking at the doc and I haven't seen like how to look in your final Google form, but sounds great. Yeah, does that is that make it more clear what I just put? Um, I think it was fine. I think it was just like a me problem, honestly. No, <laughs> it's okay. You you're not the only one who probably would have thought that. So, thank you. Um, but yeah, that's my initiative so far, and it's probably gonna be the last one I do just because it'll take two weeks, and then it's like exam week, so. My computer is being its usual self again, and it looks like I'm frozen, and I hope y'all can hear me, but. Um, we can. Can you hear us? Yes. Okay. okay. I'm just going to stay like this just in case. Um, yeah, thanks, Nail Um I can't look at the questions at this moment because technology, but uh, I'll be sure to look at it later tonight. Um, if you could send me the link somehow um, I would greatly appreciate it um, but thank, thank you and Patrick hey um, so I spent last week just kind of doing um, a little more deeper dive into some of the MC, MCE bills that were in um, the legislature oh. last year um, there's been some interesting stuff that they've been talking about um, and like some different alternatives um, I think would be worth exploring, but other than that, I really haven't been able to do much this past week. I've been working on my ERCAD um, submission, so that's sort of that's from where I'm at right now, and probably this week as well. Um, but I do need to touch base with you, Wendy, um, and so we can get on the same page with like how we go forward. Um, so I know I know we're definitely going to start hitting some walls with kind of the delay of um, you know new student orgs and the signing die being today, so the end of the session, um, but. We'll figure, yeah, we'll figure out where to go from here. And so I'll, I'll have my goals, hopefully for next week done also next week. Um, Cause I'm not sure what to do right now, but um, other than that, nothing else. So thanks. Cool. Um, yeah. Oh gosh. Okay. Um, thanks Patrick for, for, for your update. And um, I have a question. 
about my update. Uh, I forwarded an email to you, Candice, and I I think I CC'd you as well, Wendy, but it's about the contract. Um, and I did see that. Um, so any contracts need to be signed by not us and not David. Um, so that he that it, there's someone else, an AVP who signs contracts for the university. So they would that would have to get forwarded up to them. And okay. David David can um, should be able to help you with that. Wait, um, so it's like one person who just signs a contract. Um, I mean, for this kind of thing, per, yes. I mean, David may tell you something different, but my understanding is that we don't sign contracts. I don't ever sign a contract. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I've never signed a contract. Um, so, the, yeah, there's that. But it should be quick if it's yeah. no money involved. You've already bought the stuff. So, it's the warranty, right? Yeah, it's just yeah. the warranty. Yeah, it should, it should be relatively painless, hopefully. Yeah. Um, do you know who I can contact about signing? Uh, well, when did you send it? You sent it today? Um, uh, I've, I forwarded it to, to David um, yeah. last week, but I haven't heard anything back, so I was just okay. asking. Okay. All right. Um, I thought, when did I... Oh, I see. You were for, you were forwarding me the thing that you sent to David. Yeah, David was already attached, so I just kind of forwarded it to you two both. I see. I thought this was the original, and this is the follow up. That's the follow up. Yeah. Aha. Um, what is this? Um. Let me look. Yeah, this is definitely going to have to be signed by somebody other than David because this has other stuff in it. Fun things. So, oh, yeah. Uh, I know it says David, but it's going to have to be somebody else. Uh, I will. You sent this to him on Friday and it's today. Yeah, let's yeah. see if he says anything tomorrow. And then if not, I'll follow up with him. Cool. Thanks, Ken. You're welcome. Um, I'm, I, I, I should probably get a journal because I've been writing like scratch notes throughout this meeting on my uh, check. So. That's besides the point. Um, thanks everyone for those initiative updates. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that we're moving forward and a lot of things are being accomplished. Uh, are there any shared governance committee updates? I'm gonna I'm speak no. Yes, I believe there aren't any. Don't got classroom committee until Wednesday. I can speak um, like a brief bullet point about university steering committee. I know a lot of faculty members um, aren't feeling compensated about all the work hours that they are putting into recently with the whole pandemic situation, but um, that doesn't have anything to concern with SGA. So I, I'm just going to leave it at that. Because I, I can't speak more about it since I'm not a faculty person myself. Um, have a level of understanding towards your professors. That's what I want to say. Okay, um, moving on towards announcements. Um, like I mentioned in my email, uh, there will be a representative from Together All will be coming in next week for a Senate meeting and the following after. Uh, will be a DEI workshop evaluation. This is in correlation to Jessica's initiative on seeing how um, our, our, our progressive track record, in a sense, in, internally with SGA, um, and that might be split up between 
two Senate meetings, it still dependent on time. Um, are there any announcements that anyone wants to speak and behold? I have one. Um, so for the initiative workshops, I think next meeting, I'm just, I forgot to email you this time, Kai, but this meeting, I'm going to email and ask for like an amendment of that to cut them from May to like ending like next week or the end of April, just because things are winding down and people are like getting busy with exams and other things like that for the summer. So just want to, I think it's like, okay to like cut it short. And I think everyone's okay with that anyway. So um, that's my only announcement. So I think the last one was like the last one. Cool, cool, cool. Are there any other announcements? Yes, Candace. Oh, your computer's working. Good. Um, so I don't know. I can't remember if we talked about this. Did anybody mention the update on the like, uh, like a co the COVID vaccine info session? No. Okay, cool. So um, Dr. Kate Drabinsky reached out to Dr. Bruce Herman, the doctors had a had a meeting of the minds. Um, and so we, they, the UHS has agreed um, to host an informational session open thing and to have, um, staff, medical staff from their office um, provide um, information and answer questions about the medical um, side of the COVID vaccines to the best of their ability. Um, and we have a pre-meeting on April 20th. I believe, and um, Joshua has graciously agreed to be the SGA person um, to sit in that meeting. Um, um, so, and that is tentative, the event itself is tentatively scheduled for April 23rd. Um, so if you um, have, if, if people have questions, if you know anybody who has questions about um, any of the COVID vaccines or, you know, wants to learn more about them or you want to learn more so that you can be better informed to, you know, share that information with those around you, um, that would be something to go to. Um, and then also related today, April 12th, all um, Marylanders 16 and above are eligible to receive the COVID vaccination. So, um, if you want any hot tips on how to book for yourself, let me know. I'll see you online at 11:59 this evening. Um, <laughs> it's like book COVID appointments. So that's what's up. Cool, cool, cool. Are there any other announcements? Just a reminder that we have Senator 101s this week. Say la vie, say la vie. Okay. Um, yes, are there any other announcements? Oh. All right. If there are no more, I will go ahead and adjourn the meeting at 7.35 p.m. And I will stop recording.